Hello, I'm Carrie, and welcome to episode 7 of the Seco Fibers podcast. Hi, I'm Carrie, and I'm coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah, and this is a knitting podcast where I talk about um, what I'm knitting, what I'm dreaming of knitting on, um, a bit of yarn dyeing, and other related things. Um, so yeah, so we'll jump right into it. Um, I apologize if you hear any weird like clinking. It's trying to rain outside, and there's a metal thing in the fireplace that the rain hits, and so... If you hear some weird pinging, that's what it is. Um, I put rain in quotes. I can't actually see any rain or wetness outside, but I can hear it. (laughs) That's a Utah rain for you. It's very invisible (laughs) most of the time. Um, Very minor life update, but I got new glasses in case you noticed. And um, I also am trying prescription sunglasses for the first time. So I'm excited to use those, especially this summer. Um, I haven't gotten to use those before, so I'm looking forward to it. should make road trips nicer. So jumping right into works in progress, my first one is Milla's Summer Top by Camilla Carlson. And this is as far as I've gotten. It's a raglan top-down sweater, and I'm using 100% linen yarn. Um, This pink is... Pink Panther, that's the colorway, and the yarn is Fluet Euroflax Sport Weight. And yeah, so I used two skeins of this, and the ball bands for the Euroflax said 100 grams. However, when I actually weighed the skeins, oh, I can totally hear the pinging now. I hope that's not too distracting. Um, But when I actually weighed the skeins, they each came to like 130 grams, so there's a fair bit of extra yarn in there. Um, And then this kind of brownish gray, that's Fiber Natura Flax in the taupe colorway. Here's a close-up of that one. I really like this color. It's like a really cool brown. And here is all I have left of the pink. I think technically it's enough for two more rows. You can see I've already used it and ripped back a little bit. Um, But I ended up deciding not to use that part. And then um, this last color is a variegated linen. And unfortunately, I don't know what this one is. It didn't come with a ball band and I got these as gifts. Um, so it's just like a mystery yarn, um, but here's what it looks like as a cake. It's got some browns in there. There's actually the brown and the variegated looks almost identical to the taupe, which is pretty interesting. But, um, there's also some reddish pinks, more red, and then there's some blue. Anyway, so this raglan sweater is the closest I, the closest top-down raglan I could find that um, was closest to my gauge, and even still, the gauge was a little off. So I'm technically making the extra large size to get a size that's equivalent of a small or extra small or somewhere in there. Um, I'm not really sure. I'll have to measure it when we're done. Um, and the designer has some really great stripe suggestions in her pattern. Um, you can see what they are, um, on the Ravelry page, and I'll link everything below. Um, I'm not going with those stripe suggestions, but, um, just because my yarn quantities don't work out that way, but, um, I'm trying something else. So immediately after the sleeves, I put a two row stripe of the taupe colorway and then I did seven rows of pink 
and then another two row taupe and then I'm starting this alternating section and the taupe stripes totally get lost. I'm aware of that, but oh well. <laughs> um, so I'm doing seven stripes of variegated and then two stripes of taupe and seven stripes of variegated, two stripes of taupe. Um, yeah. And so I'm just going to do that until um, this brown runs out and I think I have enough for nine stripes. Um, and then I'll just finish it with whatever's left from the variegated skein. So it's thankfully what's really nice is that it's all just easy stockinette. I'm just knitting in the round and so that's really easy and mindless and having the two row stripe and then the seven row stripe alternating like that makes it pretty potato chippy it's like oh i just want to get to that next one and so that part's making it enjoyable and not boring which i like um ideally i probably i might pick different colors i would definitely go with a higher contrast so you could see these stripes better um but i mean this is what i have and i think i think it'll be okay um if anything else this is my first raglan and I really just want to see how it fits and that way it'll let me know um, for future sweaters like okay I want it to be this long I like this amount of positive ease and those kinds of things and so if nothing else this will be a really informative make and help me on future projects but honestly I really do like 100% linen um, as a fabric so I think it'll be really nice to wear whenever it's finished anyway so yeah so that is with number one and if you've seen any of my past episodes you've probably seen some more 100% flax yarn that's a fiber natura um, their sport weight or no their DK which is pretty much the same um, it's this stuff in different colors. So I have a whole bunch of like a gradient of blues and some greens and like a dark gray. And um, I think I have 300 grams of that in total. Each one is 50 grams. And I've been, I was really hoping to make another raglan out of that whenever I finish this pink one. However, this pink raglan is going to end up being around 400 grams worth of yarn um, and so I was like oh so I either would need to buy new needles to change my gauge buy more yarn in order to get enough and use the same needles um, or just make a different pattern and so that really threw me for a loop as I was trying to plan the next project and so I was feeling a bit discouraged about that and it's like when I get a problem in my head I just really want to solve it and it won't go away until I come up with a solution and so that kind of derailed my knitting for the last couple of weeks and so I mean I was still working on this and I got it to um, this body island point which I was really glad for and but then I got stuck trying to figure out what to do with the other yarn and I went to the library again and checked out a few different books and one pattern that stuck out to me is from this book um, it's called Vintage Knits and it's by oh I think it's just put on by Rowan and it has different designers in it anyway here's the back in case you're curious they have some pictures in there But the one that stood out to me as being a possible option is called Alouette by Sarah Dallas. And here's what the up looks like. I actually think this is really pretty. Um, it kind of has a 50s vibe, um, but I like the drape and I think the feather and fan stripes are really fun and it's a way of using multiple colors in a purposeful way. Um, my colors would not look like this photo because I have more of a gradient rather than um, I guess the same proportions of colors that they do. They use four colors and I have probably six. Um, 
and they recommend for the small size um, three 50 gram balls of one color of your main and then two 50 gram balls of an, your next main then one you have next most of and then one 50 gram ball each of two contrast colors so those would be those dark stripes but um, I really like this and so I was trying to figure out if I can make it work if I change gauge or don't or if I do the sleeves very differently and I did find um, on Ravelry a project of someone who had made this pattern but did it with I think a different neckline and different sleeves to use less yarn and her project came out very nicely um, but at that point I was just feeling like ah, this is too stressful I don't like playing yarn chicken I feel like I've been playing yarn chicken for a while trying to figure out how to handle different amounts of yarn and stripes and things like that and so it's like I'm craving a solid color or something <laughs> and so and a solid color item where I don't have to worry so much about running out of yarn and so what I think I'm going to do at least for this project is I'm going to put those linen skeins on hold maybe till next summer and just let them hang out and I'm going to cast on something else where I can control the amounts of yarn much more easily. And I know I'm going to get eventually some bigger size metal needles so I could change the gauge um, next time. I just, I'm not buying those needles quite yet. And so I know in future that could be a solution or maybe like a lot of time is going to go by so maybe I'll pick up some more yarn and I'll have like more inspiration for it and, or maybe I'll just come up with something totally different so I think that'll that'll be a good project for the future um, so what I did cast on next is a solid color uh, top and I should have enough yarn for it <laughs> Um, but if I don't, it's easy to get more. So the pattern I'm making is the ranunculus. And when I went on Ravelry to buy the pattern, I looked at the number of projects that people have kind of put up with their notes and everything on Ravelry. And there's well over 13,000, I think. That's insane. That's, I mean, I knew it was a popular pattern, but that's incredible. Anyway. So I'm making my first ranunculus, which I'm really excited about. And for the yarn I'm using, I went to Hobby Lobby, which is like a big box craft store here in the U.S. And I got some Yarn B, which I think is one of their store brands. And it's called Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids, and the colorway is snow-capped. Yep, it's 5 ounces and 335 yards. Um, I believe... It's DK-ish. It looks DK-ish to me. I'm not quite sure. Um, they recommend using a US size 6 or 4 millimeter knitting needles with it. Um, it's 100% cotton. And I was really curious to um, feel it in person because cotton can sometimes be, feel kind of hard or rough. But this is so incredibly soft. I cannot believe, like... And this is like a pure, really bright white. It's probably looking a little dark on here, but it's like copy paper bright white. <laughs> um, and it's so soft. <laughs> I could like, I mean, I don't know how it wears, um, but if I were to make like a cotton face cloth or something, this would definitely be a good choice just because it's just, it's incredibly soft <laughs> and it's and it's fluffy and it even has like a little bit of a halo on it from just the fibers fluffing up it's pretty cool um, so I'm quite pleased with it so far um, it feels like knitting with a cloud <laughs> um, so here is my ranunculus so far I got two of those cakes so here's my second one and I'm pulling from the middle I usually pull from the outside but since it's 
kind of this sort of thing with a band. I decided to pull it from the inside. I thought it might be less messy. I know I'll have to like roll it into a ball at some point, but oh well. But here's what I have so far. I just started the, I think that's the marker for the, nope, that's just an extra. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I just started the yolk textures. It's really fun. I totally see why people enjoy this pattern. Not only is it very versatile as far as yarn weights and making it your own, but the actual texture of the yolk is super fun. And it's easy and simple and I'm really enjoying it. Um, silly me though, like, so I swatched for this just, I was curious to see what different size needles would do with this yarn. And so I started with US size 10, which is what the um, pattern recommends. And that's a six millimeter. Um, that looked very loose and my stitches looked a bit messy. Um, I think it would look just fine if I wanted to wear like a cami or something underneath, but I'm really hoping for this to be a summer t-shirt where um, I can just throw it on as a single layer and go. Um, I would love to do that. That's, that's how I would enjoy wearing this. And so I also tried it all the way down to four millimeter needles, which is a US size six. I can't remember if I did a US 5 test or not, but the needles I ended up landing on were seven. Let's see. What did I use? Yep, US 7s, and these are four and a half millimeters. Yep. So that's what I'm using. And so obviously that changes gauge and everything, but um, I cast on for the smaller neckline, um, exactly according to the instructions she had, and um, I can still fit it over my head. And so, um, even though I'm using smaller needles, it's not affecting that so far, and that works. And so far, none of the... Okay, to be honest, I haven't read all the way through the pattern. I know you're supposed to, but oh well. <laughs> um, but so far, all the instructions beyond that have been like the same for all sizes and so I've just been following that um, and so whenever I get like if there is a difference at some point for different sizes I'll just take it as it comes we'll see um, my plan is like they have a she has a spec sheet with a chart for like okay if you you have this many stitches for the size and that kind of thing. Um, and so I am anticipating knitting a size seven. I think that will give me some positive ease still, but I should be able to complete the whole thing with just these two. And if that's true, that would be amazing because um, that would mean I could knit a ranunculus t-shirt for about $8, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, and that's really nice because they have other colors in this yarn that I really like. There's like this, I think they call it something like a stormy blue or overcast or something. And it's kind of like a muted light blue. And then there's also a burgundy color that's really nice and a mustard color. Um, they have a number of nice ones. And black, black would be really nice looking. Um, but yeah, so I, I didn't get more this time because I want to see how this one wears. And I'll, I want to see how much... The pattern actually will take. Um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. One of my favorite pieces for the pattern so far is her explanation or her instructions for the short rows. I thought they were super clear. Um, she uses German short rows and it was just, I loved how detailed and clear everything was. Um, for some of these fancier stitches and for the cast on, I looked up YouTube videos to help, and I'll put a link to um, the playlist of tutorials um, that I've been using to help me. Um, 
and it really holds your hand between the pattern itself and these videos. It's like the easiest walk in the park knit. Any question you could have is totally answered. So that's really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. Um, so I'm probably going to mix in and jump around like different sections of the podcast as I go because everything's a bit connected. So um, when I was working on Mila's summer top, um, at first I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to finish this and then I'll start my next one. But then I realized we are going on a road trip soon and we're going to hang out with family and we're gonna have lots of conversations and time sitting around. And this is perfect talking knitting. <laughs> and so like, it's just mindless. It's just knitting in the round, stockinette. And so I figure, okay, I will save the rest of this project for when we're sitting around talking. And I'll just leave it at that. And I'll cast this one on. And so hopefully between now and our trip, which is, we leave this Saturday. And so I'm, I'm hoping to upload this podcast on Friday. So if you're seeing this, we leave really soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully I can get most of the complicated parts of this done this week and on the road trip up. We are going about three hours north to Idaho to see um, Nathan's parents for the 4th of July. It's a big tradition that they've done for decades where um, like we do like home fireworks in their cul-de-sac and um, Nathan's sister and her kids are there and um, my parents are coming this year. They came last year as well. And so it's just kind of like a big family gathering and it's just a whole lot of fun. Um, there's a dairy with awesome ice cream that we usually go to several times and a, an enormous fireworks show. Um, this is in Idaho Falls and I think Melaleuca is a local company there and um, apparently they're doing really well because they're ho they, every year they host this gigantic fireworks show and um, yeah, it's, I think they claim it's the biggest that's west of the Mississippi or something. It's huge. And anyway, it's a lot of fun. So we'll go see that. And yeah, and then at the end of next week, we'll go camping. And so it's like this big whole fun thing. So my hope is to get the complicated parts of this done probably before I have, like before I'm hanging around people. But um, if not, I can do this in um, more chill times when it's just me and my sister-in-law, Michelle, because she's also like a heavy crocheter and she crochets as much as I knit, if not more. And so we, we like to do our crafty things together. So I can save this for when I'm hanging out with her. Um, but whenever this gets to Stockinet Island, that'll be really fun as well. And while I was at Hobby, I mean, <laughs> Hobby Lobby, um, I looked to see if there was anything on clearance, and there was. And to my shock, Patton's Croy Sock Yarn was on sale. They had maybe like five colors, which was amazing. And normally, um, a 50 gram ball is about $9. Yeah. And, um,. I got two and in my mind in order to well I mean in order to need, knit a pair of socks you need two of them and so $18 for a pair of socks with commercial yarn um it's like eh, it's like and since I dye my own yarn it's less expensive for me to just dye my own and with like merino and all that and so it's like it's not really cost effective I mean I like the novelty <laughs> of using commercial yarn, which sounds really funny, but, um, so I just haven't done it because it, it just seems a little overpriced. However, it was on clearance for $2.24 per ball, which is amazing. And so this is actually a color that I've been wanting to get anyway. I saw it quite a while ago and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's called mid-century stripes 
and there's oranges and creams and kind of a tealy green and some more blues and like a rusty red pink as well um i'm really looking forward to knitting it up um this will be for me i think mm. but i've been looking forward to knitting socks for the fall like having a fall pair of socks and so i think this will be it because the oranges really get me and that makes me think of fall and i'm not sure if this goes along with the whole acquisitions section ah Lydia, my three-month-old, is also keeping us company today, and so any coos or odd baby noises are coming from her down there. <laughs> but she's happy and just looking around, so she's good. She's liking all the yarn. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm not sure if this really goes in acquisitions, but um, something I'm really looking forward to and planning is um, we are going up to Sun Valley in Idaho in October for the Trailing of the Sheep Festival. And we went last year and it was amazing. The, oh, we had the best fall colors last year. They were incredible, like fiery reds and yellows everywhere. It was gorgeous. And um, when we went up to Sun Valley, um, like it's in the mountains it's just so beautiful it was like it was breathtaking and anyway so up in Ketchum they have this tradition where so I'll have to read more about the history of this I remember basically the gist is that region of Idaho was huge into sheep herding and the wool industry back in the 1800s I think and um, so there were like thousands and thousands maybe millions of sheep up there and um they have to take them from different pastures to others different times of year and uh, at one point they needed to move some sheep and um they had an issue with the city of ketchum and the sheep herders moved them down main street and so you have this like incredible mass of sheep just going down main street to get to their winter pastures and it it was pretty funny and like at the time it was this rather contentious thing I think but now they've really embraced it and the city of Ketchum puts on this trailing of the sheep festival and they had like last year they had like 1500 sheep go down Main Street along with like other parade type things and it's a several day festival and there's vendors with all sorts of local wool products like yarns and spinning fibers and baskets and pretty much anything knitters and wool lovers would like and there's even classes for different things and i'm excited because i think i'm taking a class this year um so yeah more on that later but i'm really excited about that and yeah it's a lot of fun so it w last year it was just me nathan the kids and our friend um who heard about it and told us about this and we got an airbnb and just enjoyed the festival for a few days and it was fantastic they also have the sheepdog trials going on for some national competition and so you can go and watch all the sheepdogs do their thing with um rounding up like six sheep or so and do different things with them and it's really fascinating and you can ask all sorts of questions and learn a lot and so I'm looking forward to watching those again. And last year we went on a mountain drive up to a lake. And I think you get a view of the Tetons from there or the Sawtooths. Not the Tetons, it's gotta be the Sawtooths. I don't know. <laughs> I'm geographically challenged. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm gonna put some pictures and footage from last year's trip up here. And um, if, you are able to go i highly recommend going it's this october i'll put info about it and signups for the classes open july 1st and they also have tons of food things like farm to table dinners and cooking classes and um and on more our low-key end of things like food trucks <laughs> and um 
it's just a lot of fun. And so I'll have information on that if you want to go. And I'll also include pictures and some footage from our last year's trip. Hope you enjoy. And last year when we were at the trailing of the sheep festival I bought some yarn and I was pregnant with Lydia at the time and I had totally lost my knitting mojo and this has happened with each of my pregnancies for some reason and so I was kind of expecting it and I wasn't worried it was just more like all right I just really don't care about yarn or knitting or wool or anything crafty right now and that usually lasts for about three or four months or so and it's just kind of like, okay, roll with it. I usually turn to reading at that point. <laughs> but um, but also with when I was pregnant with Lydia, I just had extreme fatigue, so I just really wasn't interested in anything. <laughs> but um, by the time we were going to the trailing of the sheep festival, I knew I wanted to be interested in knitting again. And I was thinking, okay, if I buy yarn and cast on a project, maybe it'll help get me out of this funk. And so I did. And, oh, I have it up here. I bought this yarn. And immediately you'll realize that I have not knitted this. <laughs> but I have cast on. So I, I bought three of these cream skeins. And these are from Nottlewonk Springs. Oops. There we go. And it's they're out of Cornish, Utah. They are that's where they have that's where they keep their sheep. And this one is a Coriadale cross. And it's 85 grams and about 300 yards, so it's a three ply sport weight, 100% wool. It's really nice cream. And so I got three of these and then I got this amazing skein. I absolutely love this color and it feels so good. This is also by Nottlewonk Springs. This is, um, okay, they call it Fancy Pants. It's CVM and Rommeldale Lamb. It is so soft. These are natural colors and I just, it's just a tonal brown. It's a cooler brown and it's like a DK sport, so it has 270 yards per 85 grams. 
I just think they look so nice. This one is, if I'm describing the feel, they are different breeds. I feel like this one has more lanolin in it. This one feels a little smoother, but I think the lanolin just make this, makes this feel a bit softer and squishier. Anyway, I feel like it, it's just so nice. Anyway, I'm excited about these. And what I cast on was the braid shawl. And this is by Irene Lynn. And it's from the Yarn Collective. I can't remember if it's a free pattern or not. I don't know. I'll put information about it below. But I really thought the cables were just so pretty. And I knew I wanted to do some color work. And so this is mosaic color work knitting down here. And I love tassels, so I think that's gonna be great. Um, this is another picture of how it can be worn. I just think it is so pretty. <laughs> Showing you now is making me really want to finish this. Wouldn't it be cool if I finished it in time for the next one and then I could go up to their booth and show them what I made with their yarn? <laughs> That'd be fun. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll show you what I have. Here's the cake. And here is the shawl so far. And so I did all of this last October, basically. It's all kind of scrunching up because it's not been blocked, but I really like the cables. It was my first time doing a garter tab cast on. I had never even heard of that before, and that just seemed like the craziest thing. And I was very confused by it, but um, I think I got it. <laughs> um, now I know that it is actually a thing, and yeah. But I really like this stitch pattern a lot. This kind of cable with the, well, it's, I think it's a faux cable, but it has this hole in the middle, the eyelet, and then the wrap around. I think it's really pretty. It's gonna be amazing blocked. And one of the things I really like about the yarn is that it has this, these little bits of other colors of wool in there. I don't know if you can see the streak of kind of brown wool there, but there's, like, it's not perfect. It's not perfectly the same, and that's what I really like about it. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking I'm gonna wanna get back to this soon. <laughs> it's been sitting on the needles for a long time. Um, and also while I was there, um, I picked up this really special skein um, I've never worked with hand spun before. Like, I've never spun yarn and I've never bought hand spun wool. So I decided to try some. And this is by Mountain View Sheep Ranch. And let's see, it's like 100% done or made by Dolores. Like, these are her alpaca. This is alpaca and silk. And it's, these are her animals on her ranch and she dyes the alpaca fibers and silk, however she wants, and then she spins it herself. So this is like sheep to skein, or no, alpaca to skein, all done by her, which is incredible. And it was, yeah, Lydia thinks it's incredible too. Um, this is four ounces and 146 yards and only $25, I was shocked. Like, that's a ton of work and a lot of care. And each skein she had was different. And she had so many beautiful colors. I really liked these fall colors. I was really feeling, well, the fall leaves <laughs> at the time. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure what to do with this yet. I'm saving it for just the perfect project. Um, one thing I'm thinking about is maybe picking up some more of this and combining it and maybe doing like a shift cowl by Andrea Mallory or something. I don't know yet. Um, 
or holding this together with a cream color yarn and doing a, another kind of cowl or I don't know but I just think it's beautiful And in the midst of my pattern, like linen yarn pattern stress, <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out, figure out what to do with that. Um, I was kind of feeling a bit of a funk when it came to knitting the last couple weeks. And so I decided to do something just different with yarn. And so I decided to dye up a bunch of test colors. And here they are. <laughs> so this is 48 mini skeins. They're each 10 grams. Sorry for all the yarn ends falling out. They're really messy. I was just trying to be fast. Um, I only have so much free time during nap time. So I was just like, gotta get this done. <laughs> so they're not a mess and I can put them away. Um, but yeah, so here's a whole bunch. And what I like to do with these, um, so let me back up a little bit. When I dye yarn, I use acid dyes and um, they come, the dyes come in these little jars of powder and you just mix it with water and then you add them to your yarn and you add some citric acid and boom, colored yarn. And, um, but I had gotten, I think, 10 or so new colors earlier this year, and I hadn't really done a proper test of them yet. I've used them, but I, the science, the scientific part of me really comes out and it's like, okay, I want to know what these colors do at different strengths over the same amount of yarn. And so I do tests like, ah, here's an example. So I do tests like this. Um, so each of these mini skeins is 10 grams and I add different amounts of dye to them. And so I also use, like I've been heavily influenced by Felicia Lowe's dyeing book. I'll put info for that below. Um, and she recommended doing these kind of color swatch cards. And so this is how I do it. And I'm not giving away any secrets. Um, like these are not creative, like custom colorways or anything. This is literally one color. It's not a mix. It, anybody can do this. And so um, this is just for reference if you want to try it. <laughs> and so for example, this is the color Teddy Bear Brown from Dharma Acid Dice. And I used, let's see, 0.25 milliliters. And I got my yarn from Nomad. It's a 75-25 merino nylon mix. And yeah, so that's what that one looks like. And then um, typically what I do for a test is I double the amount of dye each time. So since this was 0.25 milliliters, I did 0.5 for this one. And that's what that one looks like. And then I did one milliliter. And then, oh, this one was a more stepped one. I did a 1.75 milliliters. And then, oh, I can't read upside down and backwards. What is that? 2.5 and a 10. Um, Previously, I had made a swatch card for five milliliters, so it's missing right there. Um, but anyway, so I did that. So I have like 48, 47 or so like new of these. Um, I'll show you my system for my swatch cards. Oh yeah, I guess if you want to see all the new ones, there's that. Plus all these. Plus these. <laughs> and then plus the brown ones I already showed you. Yeah. So, tons of new cards. And those will be added to these. And in total, I'll have over 150 of these cards. And, um, 
Some of them, probably mo maybe most of them are straight colors at different levels, but like for example, this is brilliant pink. I mean, a ballerina pink. Um, it's a very pale one. I'll get a different one. Ah, here's a good. Here's ballerina pink. And, oh, just as an interesting thing about these, um, different colors are have different strengths. The, a really um, clear example is teddy bear brown, which I just showed you, and ballerina pink. Same amount of yarn, both 10 grams, and um, the same amount of dye each 10 milliliters. And yet one is way darker than the other. And so this brown is super strong and a little goes a long way. And ballerina pink, in order to get a really dark pink, you would have to use a ton of it. And even still, I don't think you would get it very dark. Um, but yeah, so that's just an interesting thing. And you would never know this if you didn't try. And so that's why I do these tests. Um, yeah, just to kind of try things out and see what happens. And also if I want to experiment and explore what different kinds of colors I can make, like see all the different oranges or greens or purples I can do by mixing colors to get them. Um, I can do that with 10 gram, 10 gram skeins and just try different amounts of proportions of different colors and see what we get. And so I have, um, like, so some of these swatch cards are from that and that's been really helpful. And, um, since I've done a fair bit of this now, um, I can really kind of know what color I'm going to get just from looking at formulas. And so it's like, okay, this amount of this color with this amount of this color, I can anticipate this. <laughs> and so that's really nice, um, which is, it's pretty cool. I've been really surprised at how accurate that's become. Um, but I never could have got there if I didn't invest the yarn and time into making these. Um, another handy thing about these is it's really easy to kind of put colorways together. I'm like, like even though I can figure out what kind of color I'm going to get from a formula, I have, I need more visual help when I'm putting different colors together, like that will end up next to each other. And so I really like having these swatch cards to say like, oh, I kind of like this palette. I could do a self-striping with something like this. Or say, oh, I really like these two. Let's maybe add this one and do some sort of variegated thing. Um, it's just, it helps me plan colorways and kind of see visually how the different colors play together. So I really like that. Um, yeah, so that, and I've been meaning to do that for the new dyes for months, and so it felt really good to go ahead and finish that, and um, now I can move forward with coming up with some new colorways with confidence. <laughs> and for the sock experiment section, um, I'm going to talk about two pairs, but one of them I actually just gave to my mom for her birthday, so I'll include a video of those socks as I'm talking or whatever, and you can kind of see kind of what they look like. Um, so last summer, actually right around the 4th of July, the same trip that I'm about to head out on, um, I was working on this pair of socks. And this is the Burgundy Dahlia colorway that I dyed, the variegated is. And I don't have a name for this color, but I really like it. It's kind of a bronzy gold color. I, I'm strongly considering making a sweater out of this. I just think that'd be really nice. Um, anyway, um, I was really looking for the perfect vanilla sock. And in my mind at the time, vanilla meant pure stockinette. And I had not done... Uh, a heel flap and gusset heel before, and I was really struggling with vanilla socks using the Fish Lips Kiss heel, because that just wasn't giving me enough stretch for the end step. It was too tight and wouldn't fit. Um, and so I was like, oh, how do I get around this? Because I want a totally stockinette short row heel, 
but that I need more of, an, more of fabric in the instep. And so I found the pattern called Heels for High Insteps by Miriam Felton. And I, I got both of them, it's a set of two. And this one is using the pocket heel. And she has this whole formula for how to figure out how many stitches to do for these different parts based on your gauge. And it's a very clever formula, and I tried it. However, it didn't work for me the first time. And so I was like, okay, well, what do we do? And so I tweaked it a little bit, tried it again, didn't work. Tweaked it again, tried it again, didn't work. And then finally, fourth time's the charm. And so I, the result is not based on her formula. It's just kind of what I ended up with. And so, um, I still highly recommend the pattern. It's a great starting point for um, if you're just curious about it, making some high instep heels. Um, but, oh, and so her pattern is basically just concerning this part of the sock. And so I, ca I these are cuffed down, and I'll tell you my recipe for these. It's not any formula. I'm not telling you her pattern. This is just what I ended up with to get socks that fit me. So I used 2.25 millimeter needles and um, I did magic loop and I did a tubular cast on and one by one red. I don't think it's twisted. It might be, I can't tell. <laughs> um, and then just stuck in it for a while. Oh yeah, sorry. There's 68 stitches and so it's a, a pretty tight or dense fabric, I think. Um, let's see. And then I wrote down my shields. Uh, you do basically two gussets around the heel. And so the top gusset right here, um, you increase, so you have 68 stitches on your needles and you add 28 stitches to that. And you do it all on the back needle. And so you find your middle six stitches, your center six on your back needle. And I, and I add like stitch markers, I think. Um, and then you add from here out, you start increasing and you do probably make ones, make one right, make one left. And so you do that. So you basically add two stitches every single row. You don't skip any. And so for about 14 or so rows, you're adding two stitches. And then you've increased um, 28 stitches. And then you do your favorite short row heel. And so that's basically like this part. And I ended up doing a fish lips kiss just because that's what I had memorized and I didn't feel like looking anything up. And I think I have about 14 stitches on the middle. Um, and then when that was done, you do the normal foot gusset. And for this part, I followed her instructions for the decreases in the gusset. And this isn't a bad thing, but it's not what I expected. But they increase on the sole of the foot. And so you end up stepping on these decreases. And that felt a little funny to me at first, but now it doesn't bother me at all. Um, one of the interesting things about it is that it creates this straight line here, which is kind of cool. So that when, like whenever I lay these socks to dry, they look totally flat and have this heel poking out. It's kind of funny, but um, it looks kind of like a ballerina on point, <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. But when I did my second pair of these, I decided to try something different just to see how it would go. And so I put the decreases elsewhere. Um, so instead of decreasing, oh, I'm not sure how to explain it. Instead of doing it how she said, I basically put decreases somewhere else. And so on the back needle here, 
with all of the stitches on it at right just after completing the short row. So you have, I think, your th normal 34 stitches plus the 28 um, that you increased. Um, you now want to get rid of those extra 28 stitches. And so um, I did, I counted 14 in, put a marker, 14 in, put another marker, and I think that's what I did. And then I just decreased and got rid of all of those outside stitches. And so there's like 34 stitches in between, 14, 34, 14. And you just decrease every other row two stitches, getting rid of the ones outside of your stitch markers. I hope that makes sense. I'll also write this down below and maybe that will make more sense. Sometimes I can be clearer with written words than talking. So. We'll see if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, what that one does is put, so instead of the decreases going down like this, it makes them go more that way. And what that does when you're actually wearing the sock, sorry, I'm not, oh, here. I was gonna say I'm not wearing socks, but I could be, so I will. Okay. So you can see how the decreases are here and it's not bad it feels like it hugs my foot and so the second time around instead of the decreases going underneath the foot they actually just travel along the side and you don't step on the middle um, however I will say one of the things I like about this pattern or the pocket heel is that it really does feel like your heel is in a pocket and it feels very tailored and hugged like your your heel is getting a nice little fitted hug and I've noticed that after wearing this pair of socks for maybe several days or whatever and it starts getting a little baggy, the heel still feels fitted and it doesn't slouch, which is really nice. So I like that and you can totally see like ends popping out here like and there's some more. I knitted this pair of socks like four times <laughs> and um, at different points I would break yarn and it's like Ah, oh well, but I wasn't going to waste the yarn and I really wanted to figure out how to make these socks fit and so I just kept going. But I'm really happy I did because I learned a lot and those are some very well-worn socks. <laughs> um, I've worn them a lot in the last year and I've really enjoyed them. As far as life updates, I've already touched on some things, but something exciting for our family is happening on Friday. We're having Lydia baptized, and so I'm looking forward to that. It's a really special time for us. And let's see, we're having family come in, and let's see, then we're all going to drive up on Saturday to Idaho Falls and have our 4th of July fun, and we'll be there all week. And then we'll be camping that weekend and then we'll come back and have a week or two probably i think two weeks we'll be here and i have something exciting planned for that episode that falls in between and i'm hoping to get some footage of while i while we're up in idaho too we'll see what happens and um then the weekend after that we're going camping again <laughs> and so hopefully we'll have some fun footage of that too and yeah so just lots of travel and um other fun yarny things coming up but yeah i hope you enjoyed the trailing of the sheep footage uh it's sheep stuff is always fun <laughs> um yeah i hope you have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for joining me and for putting up with all the weird pingy rainy noises and Lydia baby noises and pacifier things and uh, thank you for bearing with like all my crazy all over the place stuff this week. It's just been a hodgepodge kind of time. <laughs> thank you for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day full of fiber and knitting fun and crochet fun. See you next time. <laughs>